FizzBuzz is one of those questions that every software engineer just has to know. You're gonna get asked it in software engineering interviews. It's fairly basic, but it's still an okay indicator of showing some good programming skills and understanding of core programming concepts. I remember when I first heard FizzBuzz, I had no idea. It was kind of a deer in the headlights moment. I was applying for some internships and just had no idea. I really should have studied up. So I wanted to make this video as kind of a more intermediate coding programming sort of video for those who want to go a little bit deeper. This is going to cover FizzBuzz. It's also going to cover maybe how you would write some tests for FizzBuzz, which yes, you may get asked that in interviews as well. So this is John Codes. I'm John. And if this video is helpful, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, leave me a comment. Let me know what you want to learn about and I will respond. So without further ado, this is FizzBuzz for the intermediate programmer. So there's going to be a lot of assumptions going into this video. I'm going to be using Golang, but Golang is pretty easy to read and there's not a lot of overhead with Golang. So the first bit of this video is going to be setting up some of that stuff, but I'm also going to be assuming that you're okay with whatever text editor, be that VS Code, an IDE, or I'm going to be using Vim just because it's a little easier for me and I've been using it frequently. Now, because I'm going to be using Go, the easiest thing to do first is initiate a Go module. Well, I already screwed it up. Go mod init example.com and this is going to be fizz buzz. So what that gave us was a new Go module named example.com slash fizzbuzz. This is a newer requirement in a lot of Go programming, mostly Go 115, 116. You just gotta be on modules. So let's continue. Let's open up our first file. I'm gonna vim just main.go. And here we go. I have a plugin called vimgo. That's this here, which just populates some of this for me. I don't need this. Now let's explain fizzbuzz. Now, essentially what we're going to have is a sequence of numbers, one, two, three, four, five. And some people go just one to 10. I've seen interviews be all one to a million. It doesn't matter. It's just a sequence of numbers and any number that is divisible by three should print out fizz. Any number that is divisible by five should print out buzz. Now, if it's divisible by a both, it's going to print out fizz a buzz. I really hope I spelled divisible right. I cannot spell. That's why I became a programmer. So what's going to happen is we're going to have some sequence of numbers. We're going to go one, nothing's going to get printed out. Two, nothing's going to get printed out. Three, and boom, we're going to have fizz printed out. Four, five, and buzz six seven so on and so forth you get it i think the next one that would actually print fizz buzz would be 15. whatever i'm not gonna think about it that's why i became a programmer i'm gonna make the computer do it for me so let's just start writing a little bit of code in here so i think the first easy thing we need to do is to get something to start printing out that sequence of numbers the easiest thing to do that in go is just a for loop so i'm gonna say for i is equal to Oh, one, we're gonna start at one. I know this program starts at one, not zero. And I, it's gonna be, we're just gonna go 10. We're just gonna start with 10. And I is going to increment as we go. Great. And let's just print out, uh, let's just print out that number. We're just gonna say considering our number. All right, there we go. How's everything looking? I don't see any errors. Uh, let's get out of here and let's go run main.go. There we go. There's our sequence of numbers back into the file. Now this, this area is where we want to do the stuff. This is where we'll actually have the number to be considering to check if it should be printing out fizz or buzz. Oh, great. Uh, we can leave this little considering here for now. That's fine. So we're going to need to do two things. Uh, we're going to check for fizz and we're going to check for a buzz. There we are. So these are just simple if statements. So we can do that. If I is divisible by three, and that equals zero, then we're gonna do a thing. Okay, this is where everybody gets tripped up. This chunk right here. If I, and this percent sign, a lot of people don't 
understand or know about this operator super well. This is the modulus operator. And essentially what this is saying is if I divided by three has a remainder of zero, then it is divisible by three. So a good example of that, let's just come in here. Let's say that three, uh, let's put this in a comment, three divided by three has a remainder of zero. Now this is like whole integer division. So uh, four divided by three would have a remainder of one. Four is not directly divisible by three. I think I got that right. You get the idea. This is uh, this is the magic right here. This uh, this modulus operator right here. This is where you are checking if that number is divisible by three. And we can basically just do the same thing for buzz. I'm just gonna copy this here, come down here, paste that in there, get the spacing right. And we're not saying divisible by three, we're gonna say divisible by five. Awesome, I'm gonna clean some of this up. Okay, so we have our two if checks. Now let's just do a very simple, we're gonna print f fizz and that's it. We're gonna do the same thing down here, print f buzz. Now let's see what this gives us. Let's see what this currently looks like. So again, we can just go run main.go. I love go, it's a little bit like Python. You can run this stuff on the command line like this. Okay, that's looking okay. Some of this formatting is looking a little goofy. Uh, so I think we need to add another print line in there. And that's gonna go right down here. So now essentially what's gonna happen is if something's divisible by three, it's gonna print out fizz without spacing in there after that. Notice that, that there's no spacing after this. I'm not putting a new line or any white space. Then if it's also divisible by five, it'll put out that buzz right after there. Then we get that new line denoting that we're going on to the next thing. So let's save and run. There we go. Now we can see the space thing. Uh, one doesn't have anything, two nothing. Fizz is divisible by three, so there we go. Uh, let's increase this a little bit. Oops, let's vim. Let's increase this a little bit up to, let's just say, I wanna get, I think the 15 is the next one to get actually fizz buzz. So let's go up to 20 and let's run. Let's see, let's see. Uh, 15 fizz buzz, there it is. Awesome. So that's really it. That like you solved it at that point. And I think that's fine. This is where I think everybody stops. And I wanna talk about, especially in Go, how you would maybe test for something like this. I've been asked in interviews before, hey, how would you actually test this code? What kind of interfaces and ways would you plug into this to actually test what you've implemented here? What if there's a bug? You need a test to check for those things. So let's get back out of here and we're gonna generate some more plumbing. So let's vim main test.go. Now, uh, test files in Go have this underscore test denotion right there. Let's come in here. We are going to func uh, main uh, test main. Just some, just something to get us going here, okay? Uh, get our brackets in there. And now very important for Go, we need t star testing. And let's get our Go imports. This is just a fancy thing. Undeclared name testing. I think I got that right. Let me check the internet. There we go. It was testing.t. That's the name of the library. I'll tell you what, this is one of those things that I never tell you in the school and stuff. You're gonna be looking stuff up constantly. Like these are the things that you really only import at the very beginning of your project. And then your editor, your ID kind of knows about those things can autofill really quickly. When you're first starting something out, you gotta look everything up over again. It's great. Okay, so we have our testing method here. And what I want to do is I actually want to strip apart the main interface, the main logic in the core functionality so that it's a little easier to test. So let's head back over there. I'm going to exit out of this and I'm just going to go over to my main.go. Great. Uh, if you're wondering what this little sidebar is, this is just the nerd tree. This is a Vim plugin. So I'm going to close that. And I think what I want to do is I want to create an additional function, that interface that I can test more easily. And we're going to call this make fizz buzz. And we're coming down here. Great. And what I want, I think what I want this to take is obviously the number. So we're going to call this I int. And then I want it to take something that it can print out to. And in Go, that's a writer. So we're just going to call that W writer. And it was in the IO package, IO writer. So we have our IO writer. And essentially what that gives us is 
a method and a way that we can write to something, be it standard out or some kind of string buffer or something, really anything. That's one of the great things about Go is you sort of can configure many different things to work in any number of ways that you want. So we have our writer. And what I want to do is I'm just gonna take this whole chunk right here. I'm gonna take it out of here and boop, plop it right in there. Let's get that formatting right. And great, so now what we have is if the integer is divisible by three, divisible by five, fizz, buzz. Great, same thing, but we don't wanna just print to the screen automatically, which is this fmt.printf. Uh, instead, we want to io.write string, there it is, I see it, and it's all coming back to me, it's all in this io package. And this actually takes the writer, so it uses that writer, and it writes the string to it. So I'm just gonna yank that, slap that in there, get rid of this, come on over here, and a buzz. There we go, fizz buzz. So now what's happening is we have some interface that we can plug into. We have this configurable writer that we can write fizz buzz to and actually test for that. Uh, and before I forget, we also have this FMT print right here. So we're gonna be testing for all this stuff. So write string, there it is, and we want the writer in there. Great, so just as a sanity check, let's, uh, let's go run this again, uh, just to make sure that everything looks fine. Nope, it does not. So let's go back in there, I think I know what's going on. Uh, we did not actually plug in, we just left this blank. We didn't plug that in. So uh, what we need to do is we want to make fizzbuzz with our integer we're currently considering, and then I think we just wanna to print to the standard screen when we are uh, in the main function. So OS dot uh, standard out, standard, uh, standard out, I see you, there you are. Add that in right there, great. And let's get back out of here. Let's run this. And that looks about right to me. All right, so we're gonna actually write our test now. That's one of the great things I love about testing. And I think I mentioned this before, you can like put this stuff into CI, you can run it locally, make it super fast. And then you're not doing a sanity check with your eyes checking to make sure that things are correct. So I think what I'm gonna want is a uh, bytes buffer that I can write to, to plug into that interface and then check to make sure what I get out of it is correct. So we're just gonna call this buff. This is just gonna be some, you can think of it like a string buffer. This is a bit of the Golang guts, so I won't bore you with it. Uh, this is gonna be under bytes buffer. So let's, uh, let's go imports. Get that in there. Okay, buff, this is just complaining because it's not used. Uh, so now what we can do is we can actually call make fizzbuzz and we have an int. So let's just let's just give it one. Uh, we can just start testing integers and stuff. And let's give it our buffer. We can actually write with an IO writer to a bytes buffer. And great. So now we have written into the buffer. So this right here, on line one, this buff is actually gonna contain the results from our function. So if the buff, and we have this, since this is a bytes buffer, we wanna compare it to some strings. So we're just gonna say uh, string, we're gonna say string buff dot, uh, I think it has its own bytes, yeah. And we're just gonna say if uh, that does not equal and what really should be printed is just a new line. It just should be nothing since this shouldn't print fizz, shouldn't print buzz, definitely shouldn't print fizz buzz. And there we go. So now if that does a thing, if that is not equal to what we expect, we can T fail. And that should be exactly what we need. Oh, we have an error right here. Oh, and this is actually a function. So we wanna make sure we call the function on that and that should give us the bytes on that, great. So let's exit out of here. This is the test. And now we can use the go command line, go test dot, dot, dot. And it ran, great. Everything works wonderfully, excellent. Uh, sometimes, I know this is a bit counterintuitive, but sometimes I like to uh, just fail my test just to make sure that I'm not going crazy. Some of this is kind of a, uh, yeah, sanity check stuff. So uh, let's, let's head over here, we're gonna fizz. And again, this is this is purely this is purely sanity check for me. I'm just making sure that I have the right test, that my tests are correct, that are testing my code correctly. Okay, fail. Yeah, because I put that in there, I expected that to fail. 
let's just fix it real quick yeah okay that's fixed up that's what it was before just run one more time great and we can add all kinds of tests like this i can just call this test main one uh we can do all kinds of stuff i'm not being super pedantic about styling this is just kind of all examples let's just copy a couple of these in here we're gonna uh we want to test for three we want to test for five and i'll put one more in here and i think we want to test for 15. somebody's gonna get in the comments and tell me i'm wrong at math but again that's why i became a programmer to be lazy so uh this is where the main part of this is getting injected we're gonna put three oops we're gonna put five and right here we are gonna put 15. great save exit let's run test met uh go test there we go uh fail 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 oh boy what did i do wrong uh let's go look oh duh i put in some assertion the three at printed into something that we expected and i didn't actually change this part duh okay so three we expect to have fizz and five we expect to have buzz and 15 we expect to have fizz buzz whoops place that all right let's try that one more time boom everything is great so let me uh just put these side by side real quick so I hope this was a helpful exercise for you to maybe dive a little bit more into some of the ideas around how you would test something like this, how the internals of something might work, because you could get asked a question like this that might dive a little bit more into the nitty gritty, asking, hey, how would you make this an interface that could be plugged into something else? How would you design something that could be tested and easily testable? I think those are all great considerations for programming and programming interviews. So again, let me put these side by side. We have our main function here. This is just doing an iteration. It's just going through those numbers, but we're mainly calling this make fizzbuzz. And again, we're checking if it's divisible by three fizz, divisible by five buzz, both those together will be fizzbuzz. And we know it's correct because we have tests for it down here. Again, I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, comment if you have any questions or recommendations. I'd love to make videos that you guys want to see and answer anything that you might be curious about. Software engineering, anything. Let me know. And thank you for all the support to the current subscribers. Please subscribe if you found this useful. Everybody, I will catch you next time. Have a good one.